project, which I've been doing since GSOC of this year. This year. Uh, GSOC's Google Summer of Code. And I am from the computer science department of the University of Sao Paulo. I am a master's student and also a member of FLUSP. FLUSP is a student extension group uh, at the University of Sao Paulo, which currently uh, aims to contribute with FLOSS in general. Uh, and we currently contribute with Linux kernel, GCC, Git, and Debian. The Linux kernel is our uh, is our strongest front. So, and we also promote contribution events such as Kernel Dev Day, which we manage to get people that never contributed with kernel to send their first patches and get it approved. So, let's start with the uh, Biology C project. So, I split this presentation into five parts and references. So I will start with the introduction and motivation. Uh, how many of you have seen a parallel compiler or a compiler compiling in parallel? Oh, which compiler does that? The Microsoft compiler? Oh, great. We'll look at that <laughs> later. <laughs> OK. So this is what this project is about. So we are parallelizing these internals uh, so that we can explore parallelism into a single file. So what are our main objectives? Our main object objectives are reduce the compilation time and highlight the GCC global states. And OK, so compilers are really complex programs. Uh, if you write a single compiler, you, well, I think you will take uh, 6,000 of lines of codes in minimum. I think more, maybe. Uh, they are mostly still sequential. And we have in GCC uh, auto generation of uh, huge files such as Gimpo Match, which has. Uh, a hundred of thousands of lines of C++. And today we have an exponential growth of the number of cores in a processor. So if we look at this graph, we can see that uh, here our single thread performance are getting, are growing slower around this curve, this curve here. However, the number of logical cores are growing exponentially. And, and look at the scale of the graph. And since 2006, we are having this situation around here. Uh, this changes uh, a bit how, about how we should develop software and scale things. Okay, so. Uh, how can we use these parallel processors inside a compiler? And how much the improvement is? And is there any project that can be benefited from this? So to answer this, these questions, uh, we just following experiments. So the first experiment is we compile GCC with um, 64 core machines. Machine. Uh, we disabled Bootstrap and just make mean. 64 jobs. We collected the compilation time of each file. We also collected consumed energy of all CPUs. And we plotted this graph here. Oh, can you see the? OK. So in the x axis here, we have the time in seconds. and. In the y axis, we have the makefile job. Since we use 64 makefile jobs, we have a one by one, uh, one to one mapping between the makefile job and CPU core. And we can see that, well, there are some sequential parts bottlenecking uh, the compilation. One is here. Uh, this is 
basically configure, but I, someone said to me yesterday that there is a cache a feature for configure, so maybe this is not a really a real problem. And this part right here, which is dominated by this really huge files here. And this is the graphic uh, about power consumption. And here we can see that this is the, this part right here is the configure part, sequential configure part. Uh, the second part here is the, is the uh, large file compilation part. And here where this part here, which is crisp, is this part, we have the most usage of the, uh, of the CPU. And okay, so there is a, CPU is not used very well in this compilation. And I also com uh, computed the consumed power here. Uh, okay, so how about LTO, running time optimization? We ran the same experiment, but uh, with LTO enabled. And this graph here doesn't, doesn't look too good because when we start the GC again, I cannot capture the, uh, the compilation itself. However, we can see in the next graph that LTO is pretty much sequential. And uh, besides this part here where the, uh, the, CPU part, the CPU is totally used, it's, which corresponds to this part here, uh, it's pretty much sequential until here. And this seems to be the only parallel part in LTO. Okay, and we also consume the more power. So, there is a parallelism bottleneck in the GCC project. Uh, we use more electrical power as a consequence. And could we improve it by parallelizing the CC? Because if so, these guys here can be reduced. And okay. So, where we started? And we, GC is divided into three main parts. The front end, which is rep responsible for parsing. The middle end, which is hardware independent optimization. And back end, which is code generation and hardware dependent optimization, which I think everyone here knows about it. And we selected the middle end to start. Why? Because it can, uh, we can, affect all, uh, back, uh, all current architectures, all ports of GCC, which is currently supported. And it used look at easier because RTL only has one single structure representing the current function being compiled. And okay, so since we are starting with optimization, we can break, break optimization the optimization set into two disjoint sets, which is intra procedural that can be applied into a function without observing the interaction with other functions. Therefore, we can run this uh, optimization in parallel with each other. And uh, inter procedural, uh, where this one is really harder because interaction must be considered. And GCC calls this the inter process analysis. So, we profile the compiler and, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in this machine. It's not the machine that I used before in the other tests. And we found that Gimpo, which is the blue part, and RTL, which is the gold part, are interprocedural and RTL part is what takes the most compilation time. And therefore, it can be easily parallelized in theory. 
Uh, however, not so sure about it in practice, right? So, uh, 40, 48 seconds is spent compiling this, this file, and 63% is spent in interrupt procedure optimization. And this part can be paralyzed. And according to the Amdahl's law, we can have a maximum speed up of 2.7 times, which is something desirable. However, this is a theoretical, theoretical result. Uh, okay, so the parallel architecture that we implemented, I'm going to talk about it now. So, to parallelize the interprocedural optimizations, uh, I'm using an approach that's similar about this paper here by Wortman and Junkin of 92. And they describe how to, uh, besides, uh, it describes how to detect functions in the in the code, and how to parallelize a recursive descent parser, as well as proceeding with the compilation of the function. And which which an arbitrary number of threads. Okay, so this is my this is our our architecture. So. The interrupt process analysis uh, is run before the, 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 the interrupt process. And when the interrupt process analysis start, uh, ended uh, analyzing the, 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 the call graph, we start inserting the functions into a queue. This queue is a producer consumer queue. And each thread is responsible to remove their work from the queue. And uh, when, when the queue is empty, the, uh, the thread is blocked until work is inserted on it. So we don't waste uh, time pulling the queue. And uh, the thread, uh, it, it, gets, it dies when the, the queue is empty and there is no more functions to be inserted in the queue. And I measured, uh, measured an overhead of 0.1 seconds for 2,000 functions. For instance, the Gimpo match file has around 1,700 functions, which is, seems to be uh, reasonable. And we are running the Gimpo passes in parallel, right? So uh, each function. Uh, are, uh, are run in parallel here until the this barrier here uh, is reached, which then join all threads into the RFL passes and we proceed to code generation. Uh, if we, after this project, this part is complete, we can start parallelizing to RFL passes and this barrier seems maybe not, not be be necessary anymore, so I'll just remove it. Okay, so what are the advantages of this architecture? So it's the best candidate for linear speed up if uh, functions are about the same size, right? Uh, the worst case scenario is when we have a single big function, which then will bottleneck the compilation. Well, what are the, uh, the, the advantage of this of this uh, approach is that we have to map all purpose global states in the compiler. So the GIMPO has around 200 uh, passes that we need to look at, and it's really painful to work on. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. So, the implementation. So we split the graph, the, the expand function into three methods. The IPA the IPA GIMPO, which is run after the interprocess analysis, and it applies the optimization into the functions. Uh, 
There's also the expand gimpo, which is basically the all passes, pass, uh, uh, until the pass expand, and the expand RTL, which is the pass expand forward. So here is where we spend our effort during this the, the growth summer of code this year. We also serialize the garbage collector because there are lots of global states here that I still have no idea how to uh, how these things works. We also serialize memory related structures. So there is the object stack and uh, memory pools. And also I'm using the threads for the thread implementation. Uh, so when I was implementing this, I found several problems in some structures. So the memory pools. So lots of the interpro uh, to, uh, the passes ha uh, use memory pools, which is basically a linked list of several object instances and can be allocated released upon request. So the race condition that we, we, uh, we found is uh, when a thread is, road, is holding pointers to the some, things, some object that is in, uh, in the pool. Another thread was releasing everything. And so OK, so the solution that we, we implemented was uh, distrib uh, distributive one, so we, we, we create a memory pool for each thread, and then we create a merge feature, which is uh, we can join the memory pools when the threads are being joined, and we did this uh, for I think only one. Uh, only one memory pool, which was in SRA. I don't remember exactly. And the implementation was just appending two list, linked lists. And I used it a um, linear time approach rather than a constant time because the linked list th there is just a single headed one. So I had uh, will then implement a double headed linked list for constant time later. Uh, well, the garbage collector. Well, the problem is that GCC implements the garbage collector and garbage can be marked to be washed by it and the collection can be done upon a request. So uh, we sterilized the entire garbage, co garbage collector and currently we disabled collection between passes and still there are, risk, uh, there are things that are being released by the garbage collector. Somehow there are risk conditions that need to be solved. And uh, we need to make it thread safe, either by implementing, I don't know, a, a, a less serial garbage collector or a distributive one. I don't know if it's possible. Okay. Uh, we also have to RTL data structure, which is the current, represent the current function being implemented. Uh, being compiled with in RTL. Uh, GCC has one single instance of this class in the entire compiler. And somehow, I don't know why, GIPO uses to decide optimization related to instruction costs, which I don't not understand why, because GIMPO shouldn't GIMPO be only to hardware independent stuff stuff? So maybe a solution be GIMPO not rely on this for this part. But however, when uh, implementing, when parallelizing RTL, we will have to have a copy of the structure for each thread. There is no other, there is no other solution. So it, it is for the future. And we also have this mem address template list, which is in three SSCI address, which uh, it seems to convert uh, address to symbols. And I don't know exactly 
uh, what this structure do, does. And there, is re there was a risk condition on this structure. Uh, currently, we serialize with a mutex. However, I don't know if we should replicate this for each thread. And also, we had the integer tree node hash, which is used as a cache for uh, when you, you convert the integer to a tree node. And currently, we use a uh, mutex, we, it's, it is serialized. However, maybe we should replicate with, uh, for each thread and remove the, the mutex because the creation of the tree node maybe is cheaper than uh, locking the mutex. I, this is still must be researched. So our results, by paralyzing GIPO, we managed to get a 2.5 speed up in the expanding GIPO part, which resulted in a four seconds speed uh, improvements in this part. However, if we project this result in the RTL part, we can see that we can drop this, the compilation of the GIMPO time about uh, 30 seconds, which is some improvements. Still, uh, I would like to highlight that this is an, op an optimized uh, implementation since uh, the garbage collector is entirely serial and there are structures that are there. There are mutex instructors that maybe not required. Still, uh, to answer our questions, uh, the interprocess analysis is an is your answer to the where the parallel processes can be used in the console com, inside a compiler. And uh, without much optimization, we can get uh, 1.6 speed up, speed up using a four threads in a four course machine and better results will probably require better efforts. Uh, for projects that can be benefited from this, uh, it's GCC because it has this uh, parallelism bottleneck and maybe some other projects. Uh, so our to do's is we must fix all race conditions in GIMPO. There are several race conditions that still crashes the compiler. And that need to be detected and fixed. And I use it C11 threads uh, feature to easily uh, replicate some structures between all threads to remove the race condition. However, this is not desirable since, well, not all compilers might implement this. Uh, so we, we need to remove this either by initialize the interprocess inter object at execute time and uh, thread attributes at spawn spa time. So we can remove these things. We need also to make this build past the test suite. So currently, it's not passing the test suite. Several. Uh, and also paralyze RTL and maybe paralyze interprocess analysis because it may be useful for LTO. And communicate for with make for automatic threading because uh, we can then uh, know if you should spawn more or less threads according to how much how much files we have in the project. And this is our references. So the paper which I see before, and the figure, the graph which I. Okay, so this is our repositories. So. 
This first one is is where I store the all scripts that I use in my analysis. This one here is my repos uh, my Git repository, which I push the, the modifications. And this is the wiki, which I currently uh, describe the project, how to run it, uh, problems, and our, our results. And that's it. I would like to thank uh, many, many people uh, about this project, mainly Richard Binier, which helped me a lot in it. And uh, that's it. Questions? So I have a question about, uh, you decided to begin with Gimbal, why not RTL, even though it's consuming more time of compilation? Uh, because uh, it was, it seems easier to start with Kimpo. And currently, uh, Gimpo has this, uh, we can change the function being compiled in Gimpo, so it was easier to tackle. However, yes, indeed, RTL spends more time and should be paralyzed. Uh, Yeah, we started with Gimpo because it seems easier. I see. And second is my observation about uh, GCC bottlenecks, which we have. So we basically have big files. Uh, first half are generated files as uh, Gimpo or gener generic uh, match.c. Uh, I was experimenting a bit with splitting of this file in, uh, in the generator like alternative approach. And the second half of big files are files like dwarf to out.c, which is an example of file which is huge and should be split anyway because it's not readable for, okay. for a developer. So. But I like the motivation to speed up GCC build because it's it's not ideal. It's yeah. well, if you uh, split the file, you will probably get better speed ups. However, you may not want to do this for some reason. So it's um, maybe a nice to have uh, feature. However, this project can we we. We are highlighting the global states in GCC, which may be still useful for the community. I mean, you mentioned the global state, and that, that's what I would have expected to be the biggest problem with anything along those lines, because, I mean, for historical reasons, GCC just has, uh, I mean, you always used to have just global variables uh, that, that all passes would refer to. And over the years, this has been reduced somehow, but in particular in the RTL stuff, there's still a lot of these global structures there. And I think a first step of anything trying to parallelize GCC would be to actually get rid of these global variables. They have no, they have no reason apart for, the, for being there in the first place except for history. And, but that, of course, means a significant refactoring of just passing yes. the per function state through all, all the passes and all the functions. And that's tedious work, but I think that's the prerequisite to anything like that, right? Okay. There are a lot of RTL passes that actually uh, pass data are bound between functions uh, using their own global variables. Yeah, no, but it's not easy to get rid of them at all. Because it changes your, your whole passes, basically. Essentially, yeah. Uh, yeah. So at the moment, you mentioned that your fundamental barrier is when you have gigantic function in one file. That's actually a characteristic of some of our machine-generated code. Do you have any ideas about how you might push the parallel 
approach towards the front end. The front? Mm. Towards dealing with the problem of having a gigantic function. I don't know. Maybe we could count how many functions we are with it so far and then split. I don't know. I think my question is slightly different than that, and that is, do you think it's philosophically possible to take one large function and compile it in some parallel manner? So you want to compile a single function in parallel, right? Uh-huh. Well, uh, currently we are not doing this. However, this may be an option for the future. Uh, we still have to uh, tackle the global the global uh, states in the compiler across the function across, across the functions so maybe so in the future when this everything here is fixed we can track we can attack this uh, so to his comment um, I did look into paralyzing at the front end um, for heuristics and other reasons right and it is possible however I would really like to see what we do with the RTL and GIMP stuff first and then if we really need to we can totally bring it out to the front end but I would just like to see GIMP and RTL to take the most compilation costly I kind of want to see if it's really feasible do we need the extra 10 or 20 percent from the front end but if we do then totally I just think we should probably start with GIMP and RTL and see if that's enough and then go from there and see if the front end, to your point, we need more granular units at the front end. Or wherever else. More questions? Um, how did you uh, detect uh, race conditions in the first place? Okay, that was a, that is, is a hard one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, we once we had thread, threads working, we used a barrier in between the passes, so we forced the passes to run simultaneously. Uh, then, when it crashed, we look at the the problem. <laughs> okay. So, we also used Volgrin and Helgrin and DRD. However, they they found out not to be useful. Uh, the most of race conditions are in a small window, and this applicate this this programs didn't catch them. So when I run inside the, the the simulators, the the code runs fine. However, when I run outside it, it crashes. I've got one here. I have a question about uh, reproducibility. Uh, did you also try to verify that generated code is exactly the same as doing it in serial way? Currently, no. So as someone who's uh, similarly taken a legacy code base and added uh, threading to it, one of the hardest parts, obviously, is getting it to work correctly. But then the second hardest part, maybe even as hard or harder, was to continue to maintain the work you've done going forward. So okay. have you put thoughts into how, if this project were to come near completion, how you would allow future developers to continue to change GCC without introducing new race conditions or causing new issues? Well, we have the test suite, right? So. If we added the test, uh, the test switch run in parallel, you're, when you're adding new features, it should pass, right? However, <laughs> that I have no idea how to force them to, to... So one of the techniques I've used in the past is to create new types of hints to the compiler or static analysis to allow okay. the developer to know at compile time that they've made a mistake. For example, adding a static analysis pass to... Um, give an error on any global variables that aren't constant. Okay. Other similar techniques. Interesting. Uh, the, the GCC bootstrap 
it uh, compiles itself with itself, etc. And it compares the binaries to see if they're uh, if they're equal. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you if you make like the stage two boot, uh, boot uh, stage two of the build uh, 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 build serially, and stage three par parallel, it should be the same, and it should be a really good test of everything. Okay. Or you can use what we use for compare debug. So compile source file twice, once in serial and once in parallel. Yes. It's the same technique. Uh, but uh, uh, the good thing about doing it in GC bootstrap is uh, 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 lots of people do GC bootstraps and we are going to notice problems that happen like two years from now. We are going to notice them, which, which is uh, the problem that we need to solve, I guess. How do you balance the parallelism this way with the make dash j parallelism that 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 people want to to do? Because you kind of want to do multiple files at the same time and then also parallelize inside without completely overtaking all the resources of your of your system. Okay, currently we do not, right? So in the future we are thinking about making a, a demo or something that uh, knows how much threads are running. So we can, oh, we, the, the make file is consuming 30 threads. So we can spawn 34 threads. And this, this is the, the CPU is getting more loads from it. So something in this way. From a user perspective, it almost would be nice, I don't know whether it's even possible, that if I, you know, I do a lot of make-j40s on mm -hmm. our bigger systems, and it would be nice if somehow you could steal some of those yes. and say, okay, some of these are going to go for per-file, and some of these are going to go for intra-file parallelism or something like that. But I don't know if that's even possible or not. Um, so, yeah, when I looked at the code, um, you may, because people use make, right, you would want to get heuristics for make potentially and then pass them into, I don't know how we do it, but pass them into GCC and then say, okay, do it at the file layer, do it at the function. To his point, that was his point about the front end, right? You need to get some heuristics from whatever front end and the tooling in order to parallelize as people would expect. That's just another part of it, right? Uh, I have a question. Uh, how far are you with submission of the patches to Upstream or? Well, I have to make the test pass. Just so it's still a long way. But you can begin with a sub subset of gimbal passes, which are fine, and then you can carry okay. on yeah. incrementally. Good idea. Especially useful to put fixes to problems in straight away. <laughs> Everybody would like that. Okay. More questions? Sorry. Uh, the, the diagram you showed with the compile times for different files, right? Uh, 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 which backend is that? Is that x86? Yes. Okay. It it looks uh, quite different than the than the power one actually. So. By the way, recently I split uh, the backend files into multiple ones, so it should not uh, block so much. Uh, uh, like like one of the uh, things that was a bit confusing to me is that in it's a in some record uh, recognizer uh, is uh, taking less time than in some emit in, in your <laughs> which is not. How it happened for us. Yeah. What functions? What file? Uh, A and B, which <coughs> is here and here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. It's the I uh, the X86. Backend, so. Uh, I mean, they must be doing something quite different than we do. So. Okay. 
It's probably AVX 512, which is coming up with a lot of patterns, instructions, stuff. Yeah. So now that uh, GSOC is over, right, yes. um, what's kind of your plan moving forward with this in terms of time commitment or maybe getting other people involved? Well, uh, I don't know. I'll continue working in this project. And if one, anyone wants to join, I will kindly accept help. <laughs> I think it would be good to actually do it as like a push level of just like send it out to the mailing list like, hey, you know, here's my prototype, right? Okay. I really want people to, you know, continue pushing this forward. Okay. So the prototype is public. Anyone can clone or work on it. Uh, and I, Richard, Richard Binner asked me to commit to the main repository. However, he did not give me uh, right permission yet, and I will do it as soon as I can. Okay. Okay. Uh, have you tried anything around LTO? So is uh, LTO is running in parallel at the moment? I'm not sure. But I found that if LTO is enabled, the compile time is really slow. Yes. Right. So this is the power usage of in CCC compilation in LTO. And this part here is the sequential part. And this is the parallel part of LTO, right? So we have a really big sequential part. And I am not taking LTO yet. However, I want to, to look at it. I, I will look at Honza about, oh. <laughs> I will talk to you later about it. So LTO is with you. Yeah. So for the LTO and the parallelism, uh, it uh, works in the way that uh, there is a serial stage, which is loading all the IL and doing inlining and this type of stuff. Yes. And maybe I can just show you. OK. And that part uh, is serial, but it takes uh, less than a minute on, on CC1+. Plus, so. Uh, I think something was wrong in the setup because then is there should be visible a parallel part where all the all the partitions are compiled. So yeah, we we can check what you did and figure out why it's not showing there. Uh. Uh, sorry. Um, when you mentioned on the mailing list, you were running into issues with the garbage collector and trying to make it either like less shared state there. Um, what have you done with that other than having the global mutex? Have you looked into that? Because you're only using, I think, a global mutex currently. So like, is there any work ongoing with fixing the garbage collector? Because there's probably a lot of shared state there, I would figure, for certain things. But I mean, <clears throat> don't you have to stop the world? Because you, it's not just, you don't have to just protect the garbage collector against another instance of the garbage collector, but against anything else that uses data that might be collected, right? So if you say you have a global mutex in the garbage collector that only protects 
running the garbage collector against running the garbage collector itself again in another thread. But don't you also need to protect the garbage collector against anything that uses any of the data that is being potentially collected? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I think if you want to have something safe, then you probably should do something like what Java is doing with the stop the world thing. Where you, once you get into the garbage collector, everything else is stopped, and you garbage collect, and then you could, you know, maybe. I think um, Richard. I basically think Richard suggested that. Uh, we don't really have a garbage collector for this. Essentially, we just pass the data along and kind of drop it if it's not needed by the next pass, um, which may be kind of a way to solve it. But there may be other people who have other suggestions about how we figure out if that's the best way, or if there are other ways we can implement this sort of. Um, we're moving to the shares. No, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is basically you would say you have pass x and then pass y. If pass y is not dependent on the data from pass x, you just drop it. You don't continue the collection across, right? So essentially, you basically each pass is in a sequential way, and it only shares among the threads for each pass, right? So you don't have to worry about passes passing to each other in terms of share its data unless they really need to. So it could potentially help. Um, Richard kind of mentioned that as a solution, so that's one thing. So let's say you have pass x and pass y. So if you pass, if pass x does not have dependent data, or it's not it needs to pass the dependent data to pass y, why don't we just clear it up? It's not, y does not need that data, right? Couldn't that be? Yeah, but that's never the case because one part of the data yeah. is actually the instruction sequence. No, no, I, I so, agree. I mean, I'm not saying we can do this for. I'm not saying we can do this for everything. I'm saying Richard suggested that for parts of it, not all of it. Yeah, but yeah, but I mean, that's one no. of the big things is actually what's garbage crack is the gimbal is. The no, I, I I totally understand so where you're coming from. I'm just, I'm just saying for some of it we can do it. Not not for all of it. I'm not absolutely not saying for all of it. That's no. It, it would be really nice for this and for GCC in general, actually, to have something better than our current garbage collector, to have better memory allocation stuff. But this is going to be a big project, right? Uh, <laughs> it, uh, but it sounds like you need something. Who's going to do it? Yeah. <laughs>